What's up guys, Electric Tech here. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how I do my crimps on large gauge wire. So in my hand right here, what I have, this is one aught marine rated wire. Um, marine rated wire is tin plated, so it's actually a little bit thicker than what just a standard one aught would be. And I'm gonna be putting these industrial grade terminals on it. Um, when I say industrial grade, these are much thicker than like just a standard copper one that you would get like off eBay or Amazon for the most part. Um, these I got, these are Thomas and Bet, and this is what they would use on like a 300 amp like panel box in like a warehouse. So it's very good quality. They are solid copper, but then they're tin plated, um, which makes them very resistant to corrosion. So without further ado, let's get right into this. This is the inverter that we're powering off. So I need some one aught to go over there to power that thing off. So I'm gonna show you how I do my crimps. So first here, if I was doing a smaller crimp, this is kind of the go-to that everyone uses for the red, the blue, the yellow. So that's only up to 10 gauge. And to be honest with you, this thing is complete trash. Like don't use it. This works much, much better. Obviously it has a cutter and then it has just a single crimper. The crimps that that makes compared to that are night and day. Uh, then we go up to a little bit bigger gauge wire, which right here you'd be into like some eight gauge or the whole way to really four gauge. Um, this crimper, this thing's expensive. This is $175. Uh, it's made by Thomas and Bet, same company that actually makes these crimpers, makes this. This thing was 175 bucks, but it's not the best option um, it, they, it doesn't crimp on all sides. It hits about four sides. So it, it's pretty good, but it's not great. But where we're at, we're into some bigger gauge stuff. So here's a two gauge and there's a one aught terminal. For this, we move over here to a hydraulic crimper. And this comes with an interchangeable die kit. Uh, I can actually crimp the smaller stuff with this too. And this is actually gonna crimp it on all sides. And once we're done with this, I could put a nail through here and hang from it. That's how good these crimps are gonna be. So I'm gonna hand off the camera here. And I'm gonna show you how I do this. So first, with a razor blade, we need to strip the wire back to where when the wire comes into the terminal, you wanna be able to see the end of the wire. If you don't see the end of the wire in the terminal, you didn't strip it back far enough. So the reason I use a straight razor by hand is because I don't accidentally push too hard and I don't cut any of the precious wire off. This stuff's cold, so it's not exactly fun to work with right now. So you just keep pushing it with your thumb as you cut it and avoid cutting as many strands as possible. Obviously, if you just tick like a razor this real hard and cut off a bunch of strands, you no longer have one op. Kind of defeats the whole purpose. <clears throat> that was easy. All right. <laughs> so now we have this big one op terminal and we're gonna slip it over the wire and we don't want it to fray out at all. If it frays out, redo it. You don't want to lose any strands here. You can see it's a nice tight fit. Squeeze it down, jiggle it back and forth, and you wanna see wire come out the end. If you don't see that wire come out the end, strip it back a little bit more. If you don't like the looks of that, you could always trim it off later, um, but it is important that you go the full length. Here's the die. You'll see there's three black lines. You wanna center the die on the middle black line. I'm using a number 50 die. I found number 50 works best on marine wire with a 45 terminal. If you were using different wire, or different terminals, your die might change. You might be a 40, you might be a 35, but for this particular setup, this is the best die. Center it real nice. And I'm not gonna go the whole way right now because you're gonna see in the sides right there, it's gonna start butterflying out. We don't wanna have too much of that. About there, I'm gonna open it back up. See these high spots right here? We wanna get rid of them high spots. So we're gonna turn it 90 degrees, go back in on it again. This time I'm gonna go the whole way.
a little bit of a high spot right there. We'll do one more. And right there, pretty decent crimp. I could put it in again and get rid of that high spot if I really wanted to, but I'm pretty happy with that. So we're just gonna go ahead and leave it at that. And just as important as the crimp itself is the heat shrink. This is special heat shrink. This is adhesive lined heat shrink. So after it shrinks, it also glues it together, which the other heat shrink is not nearly as good. I mean, it doesn't really do much other than cover it. This, some of this stuff is waterproof. This one's not 100% waterproof, but it really just gives you that insurance that if the terminal comes loose, it won't pull apart. You're supposed to start from the middle and you're supposed to use a heat gun, but I'm lazy, so I'm using a torch. So I'm not going to get it as clean as I would if I used the correct heat gun. Maybe I'll time lapse this for the video. have it a one ot connection that is never going to pull apart uh this tool is not very expensive at all i actually got this off uh i think ebay and it was like 60 dollars. so compared to that other 175 dollar tool uh very affordable and definitely a good investment if you plan on doing any any big gauge wiring